Welcome to Learn C, Lesson 2. Um, in this lesson, we're just going to cover a few definitions. And the first definition I want to cover is the term overhead. Um, and there are a couple types of overhead. There's computer overhead, overhead that the computer has to have to, um, to operate. And then the main type of overhead I'm going to talk about is time. Overhead time of the computer time running um, a certain calculation, and more importantly, your time. So your time of overhead to actually complete a task. So those are two types of overhead. Um, let's talk about overhead in the context of the two programs that we've seen so far, Excel and uh, computer programming language like C. So with Excel, if I want to run it and I get it up, E-X-E-L, I click it. I click that. And up comes the, um, the Excel spreadsheet. Um, if I want to load a data file in there, there's a little bit more time to get the data in. And then there's, there's time of devoted to typing out equations, where to put the equations, things like that. That's all overheads. Some of the overhead is in the computer's uh, ability to produce this graphical interface and all the things associated with it. Some of the overhead is you learning how to use Excel and the time that you, it took you to learn Excel. Those are usually pretty small and not very impactful. In fact, this thing came up pretty quickly as far as software goes. Um, but the main thing is your time. So you clicking, finding the app, clicking it, waiting, clicking, those are the types of overhead that I'm talking about. So that's your time overhead. What are the types of overhead for C? So you click on overhead. Um, it's more, right? File, new, project. Let's call it project one, C application, okay. I'm gonna put in C code, save, yes. <clears throat> so that took more time than took to get um, Excel up. And moreover, um, I'm gonna have to actually write a computer program in here. So that's actually a lot of overhead. Um, there's overhead in a C program as well. So just as Excel has graphical user interface overhead, this has overhead in terms of all these lines. These lines that we don't know what they are yet, um, these are including certain header files. So standard IO and standard live are header files that we need to include. Um, every program has a main argument and it returns a value of zero, hopefully. And within that is the sense of your program, but and so I'm going to write a program, I'm going to write it in here. So I would, I'm going to probably use the term overhead to describe all this other stuff for which we don't know exactly what it is right now. So how does overhead between C versus Excel compare? Um, uh, for really, really small programs, Excel is pretty easy. And if I wanted to take the average of 10 numbers, I probably wouldn't write a C program to do that. I'd probably just pull up Excel. Um, for big, big jobs, as I've shown in the previous um, lesson, um, absolutely I would use C. I've made a graph to kind of illustrate this. So here, um, on the x-axis is sort of an index of the complexity of a task. How many numbers you have to calculate? How many types of different calculations you do? How many different files do you have to do a, calc a single calculation on? Those are kinds of examples of complexity. The y-axis is how long it takes you to complete it. And so this is overhead. This is your overhead time to complete it. So on this axis, and, and the yellow, orange line here is Excel, or, or an equivalent type of um, point and click type of program. And this is a um, uh, program using a programming language C. For small, so for C, there's a lot of overhead at the beginning, right? To, to be able to learn how to write a computer program, to be able to compile it and link it and save it and know how to use it correctly, that's a lot of initial overhead, right? Whereas Excel, um, you know, you, you can just basically get up and start using it pretty quickly and do lots of stuff with it. It's actually pretty easy to learn. So the overhead associated with learning Excel is a lot lower than it is for learning C. So for small tasks, just like something like programming, uh, getting the average of 10 numbers or something like that, yeah, I would use Excel. But it doesn't take very long before that overhead pays off, meaning 
the, um, the incremental the incremental time that it takes to do really really complex tasks as opposed to simple tasks is just a little bit of added programming whereas for excel we you, if you have to do 10 files instead of one file and yes i know that there are ways to use macros to automate excel and everything but for the time being let's just pretend that that's um uh, let's pretend that that's hard to do and it is i mean it, it's there are a lot of tasks for which macros aren't very good, especially if the task changes in different ways for different files and you have to be sort of uh, prescriptive of it, right? Um, then uh, having to do 10 files is about 10 times as long as having to do one file, right? And so that's why the time to completion of Excel rises linearly here. And yes, with macros, it would it flatten out some, but that's it's way less it's way it's by the time you get to a certain crossover point it's always going to be more than c it's always going to be way less overhead to do a big job in c than excel and we also know that this graph ends right so if this 10 represents calculating the average of 1 million 48 thousand some odd points um excel just can't do it and c just keeps right on going and going and going so um i'm only telling you this showing you this graph to sort of inspire you to keep pushing forward on these lessons because right now we're in this mode right right now there's a lot of times you're going to be saying to yourself um, i could have just made a powerpoint slide that said hello world on it why do i need why do we need to do this or um, i could take the average of numbers in excel much easier why would i need to go through all of this rigmarole at the payoff comes when you have to do much much larger number sets and uh, believe you me if you're in if you're going to be a technology leader um, you're definitely going to be doing, uh, you're definitely going to be operating in this region in the, in the future. Um, the second definition I want to do is to sort of describe um, the convention of how to uh, write um, lines in C. And the main, almost many of the lines written in C are going to be function calls. You're going to call a function. We are, we've already done it. We've called um, print f, that's a function. Right? Return is also a function. And convention of a function call is that you're going to have the function name and then open parentheses, and then the input to that function inside parentheses. Um, return zero didn't have that. That's a that's another convention that I don't want to follow. I mean, I want to sort of follow the same convention in all of my programming here. It helps. It helps you, and moreover, it helps other people who are going to read your code. So that's the overall convention. Up here in this slide, you'll see the general convention for a function call. The output of the function call is on the left-hand side of the equation. And then on the right-hand side of the equals, uh, equals sign is um, the function name, and then in regular parentheses, um, the, the inputs to that function. And if there's more than one input, they're separated by a comma. Um, in printf, two things. One thing, there's only one input to, in this case, and that's just this string, hello world, that we're sending to the screen. Um, but for both, both printf and return, there's no, there's no equal sign and there's no output on the, um, on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Um, there is an output to both of these functions. It's just, not, it's just that we don't want to see it and we don't want to know what its value is. And so that's why we don't have an equal sign. And so both conventions are perfectly fine. Um, sine and cosine are functions in C. And so the input to sine is going to be an angle. And the output, which would be on the left side of the equation of the equal sign, is, um, uh, is going to be the result of the sine of that angle. Um, so that's the convention for function calls. It's important to get that right, to, to always know left-hand side of the, of the equal sign, right-hand side of the equal sign. That's it for this uh, lesson. Um, uh, next time, we're actually going to do a program that actually uh, does some calculations.